No matter your age, your plan for retirement can start today. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Retirement Report. Good morning. Welcome to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. Ran across an article recently in the Wall Street Journal that I'm going to share this little bit about today. This was kind of interesting. This was about Warren Buffett's index bet. Uh, this famous bet goes back 10 years. Back in uh, 2007, he bet that he could, with an index fund, outperform actively managed hedge funds over the same period, over that 10-year period. So there was a million-dollar bet. And uh, the other was uh, protege partners are the ones that picked the, uh, the basket of uh, hedge funds that they were going to use. So what we're looking at is a classic index fund uh, versus index fund and, and index investing, if you will, uh, versus actively managed uh, funds. And here's how this came about. So we were, we're looking at a million dollar bet. They each put up, I think it was 332000 that was going to go into these bonds that would grow to the million over the 10 years. That was the, the concept. It actually ended up working out even better for the charity they selected, or that Warren selected since he's the one that won it. Uh, he, the the, uh, the uh, actual amount ended up being $2 million, not because of bonds, but because of other things they did. And here's the, the key, though. Think in terms of indexing. So at the index fund, what he did, he selected the S&P 500 index fund. Now, the S&P 500 index, of course, is the 500 largest companies in the United States. They make up about 70% of the equity in the stock market, and they outperform the majority of, ex of uh, equity uh, index, uh, excuse me, equity mutual funds. So what we're looking at, in fact, is with the S&P 500 index, that, that index, and you can get that through a number of index funds, so that index fund, we'll say, has outperformed equity 90%, over 90%, I think, uh, according to, to most numbers, most research out there, of equity mutual funds. Now, here's the other part. Of the 10% that beat the S&P 500 index uh, each year, it's not the same 10%, okay? It's not the same funds. In other words, it's not that someone, there's 10% of funds out there, in fact, that have figured it out and can outperform the market. No, and it's just that some got lucky and happened to have the right mix at the right time. We know this because they're not able to keep doing it, right? Otherwise, if they really knew what to, how, to, how to, you know, a formula or a, uh, had the, the knowledge, if you will, uh, or the way a crystal ball to look into the future and would be able to outperform the market consistently, we would see those same funds over and over, and that's not the case. So what happened here? Well, in the 10-year period, which ended in, at the end of uh, trading in uh, 2017, the index fund, the S&P 500 index fund, averaged 7.1% per year for the 10-year period, compounded annually. How did the hedge funds do? How did that actively managed basket of funds do? 2.2%. So the S&P outperformed by like three times. And I'm going to show you today how you can do even better than the S&P 500 index fund, not by active management. We know that doesn't work. And I'm going to show you of that uh, as well. But by how to use indexing to take it a step further than just the S&P 500 index fund, but to add other indexes in put those together and we have six, well, 50 years, over 50 years now of Nobel Prize winning academic research that shows us how in fact to construct a portfolio of index funds, institutional index funds specifically, to outperform the market. And here's the best part, with less risk, less volatility, all right, less concern all right, that you're going to have a, a down period. When we have our next bear market, as an example, you're not going to be waiting five to seven years to recover from that, as we see with the S&P uh, 500 index. So even though it outperformed over that 10-year period easily, in fact, hands down, we, there are ways that you can do as well or better, but with less risk. All right, and we're going to talk about that today as well. So one of the things we're going to do to accomplish that is I'm going to talk to you about the, what we're going to call the myths versus the truths of investing. So I'm going to get into some of the traditional myths out there that come into uh, investing. And these, this is from a portfolio manager put this uh, slide together, and, I'm gonna, and I've been use, working with them now for, gosh, uh, about 10, 12 years, I think it is now. And uh, so this is some great material that, uh, that I share with clients all the time, and you're going to get to benefit from that today, all right? So separating myths from truth. So let's talk about what those myths are. Uh, so some of these myths, and we're going to talk about the academic story. Now, we're going to get into the myths today, and, we're gonna, and I'm going to share some additional things with you as far as investing. 
and then talk about the academic story of investing and then basically because here's the other part if you know you got it nailed if you know that you've got the right investment portfolio you've got the right investment plan it's going to give you a lot more peace of mind right you're going to know that whatever's going to go on with the market we've got a lot of historic research we can see how these portfolios have performed over the last two bear markets as an example and even prior to that actually if we want to go back far enough but over the last two I think is most pertinent so if we look at from 2000 in other words through 2017 and we see the two bear markets from 2000 through 2002 and of course the bear in, in uh, from that started in October of 07 and went through March of 09 these are two market one was a 45 percent drop and the other a 55 percent drop wouldn't it be nice if you could have a portfolio where you knew you wouldn't take that kind of hit? And here's the other part. It took five to seven years to recover from those. Wouldn't it be nice if you could recover in like 18 to 24 months instead? Wouldn't that give you a lot more peace of mind and, and confidence in terms of your planning? That's, the, that's how it works. And the next piece is when you're doing the planning, right, when we do a comprehensive plan for somebody, it's not just the investment piece. We recognize we don't know when the market's going to go down again. We're excited that the market's doing so well. This is great for all of us. Uh, however, we also know it's a cyclical <laughs> monster and that it can, in fact, uh, and will, in fact, have another bear market at some point in time. So when that happens, we want to be positioned to where we're not going to take as big a hit. We're not going to have to worry about changing our lifestyle or, or changing our retirement plans because of that, that we've got it baked in, right? We already know. Our plan, in fact, incorporates in the fact that, yes, if the market goes down, we're still going to be able to maintain our standard of living and quality of life no matter what. All right? That is the key when it comes to investing. Now, I'm going to get into some information today with you and share with you. However, again, understand there are some, when it comes to your specific situation, it's so important that you've got the right plan in place for you. And to help you with that, for the first 10 callers this week, Here's what we're going to do. First 10 callers to my office, 615-376-5325. There's the number on your screen. Tess is standing by to get your information. She'll take your call. She'll send you out a packet of uh, information of things that, uh, a checklist of things to bring to your appointment with me. And we will do up an investment plan, a complete comprehensive financial plan, which will include an investment plan for you. We'll analyze where you're at today, show you based on the things you're doing today, what your financial future is going to look like 10 years, 20 years down the road. Answer questions about Social Security, Medicare, all the different things, these complicated <laughs> programs. And, you know, do I take Social Security now? If I'm already taking Social Security, how can I minimize taxes on that Social Security? What about capital gains taxes? Speaking of taxes, what about the new tax law? How does that impact me? All of this we handle in this comprehensive financial planning appointment. What you, when you come in, whether it takes one visit, two visits, three visits, I'm going to develop or design for you a comprehensive plan. I'm going to show you what you're doing today, what your financial future is going to look like based on that, and then show you ways to improve that all at no cost. And when you come in to see me, I'll give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. All right. So again, first 10 callers, 615-376-5325. Tess is standing by. She'll get your information, send you that packet out, and I'll look forward to seeing you. All right. We're going to, before we jump into investment, um, uh, separating myths from truth, we're going to take a quick break. Join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report. This is